in search of soil. From a mineral standpoint, sand versus clay. Okay. Well, sand, beach sand, uh, is dominated by quartz. SiO2, silicon oxide. Quartz exists as, as roughly a, a, not quite spherical, but you know, a, 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 a about equidimensional particle. Okay. And quartz particles, those surfaces on the quartz particles, um, they can have a positive charge, a negative charge, or a neutral charge. They have a positive charge when, when they're in a very acidic environment. You put them in acid. They have a neutral, they have a, an, a basic or a negative charge when they are in a very alkaline environment. You put them in sodium hydroxide, right? But across most of the range, pH range, where crops are grown, where soils of agronomic value, um, those quartz particles have a neutral surface. They do not have a, either a positive or a negative charge. So it varies as a function of pH. They have very low surface area, even a, um, uh, and, 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 okay, so if you look at the mineralogy, it's dominantly quartz. There are other minerals in there. There are what, minerals called feldspars and, and, and a number of other phases, but by and large, sand is hugely dominated by quartz. Okay, clays are not quartz. They have some silicon in them, but they also have aluminum and iron and magnesium, and um, they have a very different morphology, and they can have enormous surface area. So if I have a, um, a one gram of sand, so, you know, about the tip of my thumb there of sand that might have a surface area of, let's say, oh, a tenth or even a hundredth of a metered square per gram. So very small. If I had a one gram of a fully expanding smectite, a montmorillonite is a, so spectite's kind of a family name. Montmorillonite is one of the uh, members of that family. Um, it can have a surface area of almost 800 meters squared per gram. So an enormous amount of surface area. And on those surfaces are those negative charges we talked about before. So your quartz particle, is essentially tiny amount of surface area and neutral. Your clay particle has enormous amount of surface area and charge sites on those surfaces. Those charge sites hold not just one cation, but millions and billions of cations. And the cations and the charge sites hold water. Okay, the quartz particle, you know, the water just runs right through it, doesn't stick. The clay particle, the water forms a nice film of water around it that encompasses those cations and those charged surfaces. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.